Hello and welcome to the Marley Bird YouTube channel. This is a My First with Marley Bird Extra this month. We are going to learn how to make a simple crochet scrubby along with the simple knit scrubby. Now, the scrubby dishcloth is made up of Red Heart Scrubby Yarn, which is a brand new yarn on the market, perfect for making dishcloths. It's really easy to work with once you know a couple of these simple tips and tricks. So let me show you how to do that. The first thing you're gonna notice about the scrubby yarn is that it's pre-skeined into a really nice ball. Now you can unwind the ball with the outside part of the yarn or go ahead and stick your fingers in and find the center pull portion of the ball. I am lucky that I was able to find the center pull for this one and I'm excited to do that. Now I'm using a very simple crochet dishcloth pattern and a size I or 5.5 millimeter crochet hook uh, for this demonstration. You can find a link to this free pattern in the video notes right down there below and while you're down there go ahead and smash that like button as my kids say if you don't mind now let's take a look back at the yarn as I'm looking at the yarn here, I want you to notice that the yarn itself is constructed in a way that it has these really great eyelashes that come off of the yarn. These eyelashes are what give the scrubby the scrubbiness. I guess that's the technical term for it, right? So as you're crocheting, you want to make sure that you're working into the base of the yarn and not into one of these scrubby pieces that are, are coming off of the base of the yarn. So as you're working along, you want to make sure that your hook does go into the actual yarn itself. You see that? Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is start with a slip knot, just like any other crochet project. Once you have your slip knot, go ahead and put it onto your hook. Now you can see right here, look, I did my slip knot and I'm already having a hard time pulling that apart. That's perfectly okay and it's perfectly normal. I'm just undoing it all and I'll start again. It's again because of the nubs that are coming off of the yarn that make it want to stick on itself, which is great for the scrubby. All right, so as I'm going to uh, start here, I'm gonna start off by chaining 27. So I go ahead and yarn over my hook and pull through. What you're gonna notice here is that as I'm creating these, it is really difficult to see where your chains are made. Right now, you guys probably have no idea where the chains are created. Well, here's a little tip I'm gonna offer to you. Now, this is not something you have to do, and it's not something that you will probably do every time you create something with Scrubby, but this is something that you could do for the first time you create something with Scrubby, just to get to know the, the let's say, low the landscape. If you take these removable stitch markers, and maybe after every two uh, chains, you just put a stitch marker, you will know where a, uh, the actual chain stitch is. So let me show you what I mean by that. I'm starting over once again. So I've got my slip knot, I'm putting it onto my hook, and I'm going to chain two. So there's one, two. So now maybe I take my, my stitch marker and I'm just gonna put it into the chain behind the stitch I just, that's or the loop that's on my hook. Yarn over one, two, and I'm gonna do it again. Once again, this is not something that I would do always, but just to give yourself some sort of guidelines here at the beginning as you're working with this yarn to get to know where the stitches are, it might be really helpful. Now, I've even had friends who have done this and put it in every single chain all the way, so that way they could find where their chains are. And you could totally do that as well. Whatever works for you. Remember, these stitch markers are not something that are meant to be like a mandatory item. They're simply there to help you be become better crocheters. As we look back down here, you can see I'm working along and I'm still just putting a marker in every second chain. And all this will do is help you see where these chain stitches are. Now, I have not taken the time to close my markers right here on the video, but absolutely, as you're going along, make sure you close your markers, otherwise they will fall out. Once you get your 27 chains, what you're gonna do is turn your work and begin to work in the stitches as they're created. So let's see here, let's say that we have 27. So right here, the next part of the instructions say to do a half double crochet in the third chain from hook. So I know I just did two chains, so there's one, two, and my third chain from hook just so happens to be the same one that has a mark in it, a marker. So I can go ahead and I can remove that marker just so I can easily get into that chain and I can work a half double crochet. So over a half double crochet, we yarn over our hook, go into that chain, yarn over, pull up a loop, 
Yarn over, draw through all three. So now I'm supposed to do a half double crochet in each chain to the end. Well, I know I just did one into a marker. So my next one is not gonna be a marked stitch. So if this one here is my next marked stitch, my next chain is somewhere between the one I just created and this marked one. So it's right here. You see that? See how those, chain, those stitch markers actually help you know where you are in the pattern? You don't have to use them, as I said. They're simply there just to help you here at the beginning. My next stitch is going to be in the next stitch that was marked, so I'm going to put my half double crochet right there and carry on. So as you can tell here, as long as I'm always working into the chain between the one I just created and my marked chain, I know I'm in the right place when I'm working into a stitch that's not marked, right? pretty easy. It makes it a lot easier for you to be able to work into this new yarn. Now, as you get past this first chain row, it becomes a lot easier to move along and work into the next row because you can start to see the post of the stitch and work into the top of the V. Let me show you what I mean. Here I am at the end and I've chained two and the instructions will tell you that this chain two actually counts as a stitch. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna use my marker and I'm gonna put it into the second chain right there. Once again, that's gonna allow me to know where that chain stitch is when I come back down on the next row. So this stitch marker is gonna be one that I'm gonna carry up along either side, okay? I'm gonna have one over here and I'll have one on the opposite side. Knowing that that first chain two counts as a stitch, I first know that I'm not going to work into this first space. I'm gonna find where the post of the next stitch is. It's right there, can you see it? And then I'm gonna go into the V stitch right above that, so that's right there. So here's my post, so I can go right into the V stitch right there and create my half double crochet. Let's do that once again. Here's my next post, here's my stitch, and I can create my half double crochet right into that stitch. Do that one more time. Here's my post, here's my V stitch right there. Can you see when I put my hook into it? I know it's kind of hard to see with the red hook and the pink yarn, but the hook is red because that's the size hook I needed. Yarn over my hook, I can see the post. Here's my V, so I'm gonna go right there. Yarn over, find my post, it's right there go into the V on top of it, whoops, and create my half double. Do that all the way to the end. And I want to remind you that because the chain two counts as a stitch, that also counts as the initial chain two you skipped when we started this entire project. So we worked into the third chain from hook, this initial chain two right here that we skipped counts as a stitch. Now, we did not put a marker in that, in that chain two, right? Because I wanted you to see kind of how difficult it is to find it. Now, I could go ahead and see where my fingernail is. I could put my stitch right there into that space and kind of get a nice kind of gap there. Or I can try to just willy my hook in somewhere around there and try and find the chain, which I did right there. So you have a choice to make. If you are not going to mark your chain two and you're just going to try and hunt and find it when you get to the end, um, then that's, you have a choice whether to put it into the chain or into the actual space. For me, I like to mark my chain two because I prefer to put it into the actual chain and if I have marked it, I don't have to hunt for it. I know exactly where it is. I'm here at the end, I go ahead, I chain two, turn my work, and I'm gonna grab my second marker, and I'm gonna be sure to put it into the second chain that I just created. Again, that's so that I don't have to hunt for my chain two going again. I wanna remind you one more time, do not put a half double crochet into that first space because this chain two right here counts as that half double crochet. We'll find the next post, there's the post, Here's our space for the, the where the V is on top, and we create our half double crochet. Pretty simple, right? All you need to do to complete this dishcloth is to work until it measures about eight inches or to the size you desire. It's totally up to you. Fun pattern, right? It's very simple, it's very quick, and it's one of those patterns that's great for gift giving. So if you have a special, maybe um, summer barbecue you're gonna go to, or maybe it's the holiday season and you wanna offer a prize, or not a prize, <laughs> a gift to the hostess of a party you're going to, these make great little gifts. And they're fun, they're fast, and 
Once you get the hang of working with the scrubby yarn, you won't need all of those beginner uh, stitch markers on the chain. You'll be able to find the chain stitches, but I do highly recommend using the stitch markers along the sides just to keep it nice and even, and you don't have to hunt and search for those chain stitches. Okay, I can't wait to see all of the scrubby dishcloths you guys make out there. And once you've mastered this really simple square dishcloth, you can move along and do all of the wonderfully cute dessert dishcloths that I've already created out of the scrubby yarn, or maybe the froggy if you're a knitter, or um, gosh, the duck. There's all sorts of various patterns, all of which are free and available over on redheart.com. So as long as you go over there and search for scrubby, you can find a lot of really great patterns. Hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, don't forget to smash that like button, as my kids say. I'm Marley Bird, proud spokesperson for Red Heart Yarns, and this is a My First with Marley Bird project. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.